Unwrapping the task where we're going to take our 3D geometry and put it down into a 2D surface so we can texture it. So this way has usually been very manual where we grab UV shells, we make seams, we flatten things out, we try to pack it in a good space, rotate UV shells and so on. Today I want to talk a bit more about unwrapping in Houdini and use Houdini's procedural features to have our unwrapping a bit more automated. I will go over all of the notes and first off I want to start out by some basic unwrapping features that I personally use and I want to finish off by showing most of the UV notes that are included now in Houdini so you have an understanding of that. In the next 10 minutes I will mainly go over the basics of unwrapping, hope you enjoyed it. To start with I want to use the auto unwrapping tool that is built in the labs. This is the most basic way of unwrapping something, this is very quick, very fast, you place it down and it will make a UV shell. So you can change the options based on what you prefer. So from one shape, one option might be better than another one. As you can see here, they might give different results and it's often a bit searching what could be the, the best for you to use. So going, for example, to different shapes might also give an impact on this, like changing this to a box. Uh, you might have, for example, here a good result with this feature. Going back to another one, maybe again, we want to tweak some of the settings. So this is still like a bit searching. Uh, but overall, it's a really good and fast method of getting uh, UVs for your models, especially if you generate something procedurally. This can be a good way of doing this. There are some bunch more features in terms of like packing and merging things together. But this is overall the auto UV node from Labs, very fast and great uh, for just general usage. Uh, next up, a very useful UV node is the UV flatten node. So here I have a basic cynical shape, and I'm going to place the UV flattening node. And with this node, uh, we'll just flatten it like you see here, but we, of course, we want to define a bit better. So what we want to do is we want to then uh, go and create seams. So here we have an option to make our seams and we can click manually seams, which is a little bit manually, and then it will unwrap here that shape for us. So based on the seams we created. So there are some settings here as well we can change. Um, so let's say we're going to pick here the rectify option, which will make sure it will uh, rectify the shape. So by clicking shift click here, we can now uh, rectify this into a better shape. We can also here disable the manual uh, layout. So we have it automatically packed in the shape. And that's like the UV flat node, very useful node. I use this most of the time uh, to control some of the UV shells and shapes. Now let's talk a bit about trying to find a way to automate this bit more. So let's put our node here on the side and we want to have a way to create seams automatically. So we can use a group node to get seams or edges where I would like to see seams. So if we create a group, call it seams, we can here filter on getting the edges of that part. So here I'm going to filter on specific angles. This works well for hard surface objects, of course. So using this in the UV flat node, we can enable seams. And as you can see, we'll use this and it will now have these rings of that model. So of course, again, this is not perfect. We can go into a manual mode where we kind of click where we want to break up some of the rings to have like one single stroke. So that's possible to again do a bit more manual tweaking. But of course, we might want to go back to our group node and we can override or add an additional information where we would like a basic big seam to have a nice unfolding of the elements. So now that is done, we can also now add a rectify by using the icon here. So we're going to here rectify everything by default, which as you can see, results in this shape. Now, here is another example where the basic box is. Again, this is a bit more into hard surface objects. So we can use a UV auto seam node, which is also very useful. And this is based on some of the settings. Like this is a bit fine tuning what settings you would like to use. And this will output as well a, a group node called seams. So this can be used in the UV flat node. If you would plug in a different uh, element, a different geometry, you need to fine tune again these sliders. So this is important with that node. Um, so again, using if you flatten, filling in our seams group, um, you can see that this is the result. So actually pretty decent, again, for like automated ways. Now let's give a general overview of UV nodes in Houdini, starting off with seams, how to make seams. First off is UV auto seams node. So it's going to take a model, it will create the seams. We can have sliders to determine how often it would create a seam. A group node is also very useful here where we're going to again search on angles like I just showed you 
and we can use that in a UV flat, for example. Now let's talk about actually creating UVs, what nodes can be used for it. First off here is, here is a simple UV projection. So for example, a plane projection where the UV is going to be mapped onto. You have different options here as well in case you want to do like cylindrical shapes or other shapes. Then we have our, of course our UV flatten, which is really, really good. So we have to input certain seams data and then after that we can handle some other additional settings like rectifying, layout and so on. Then we have auto UVing from labs tools, which is really great and fast. So just place it down, it will generate UV and you can call it done. Then we have the basic UV and wrap, which will be from uh, the based on the side. So here it's like six sides, we can change it to another side and we can have a simple unwrap. Then we have the UV texture node, which can be used in multiple ways. By default, it can do some projection. It also has some options for splines as well, as also some camera specific options. So it can be used in a variety of different ways. Then on top of that is the labs UV uh, tool for cylinders. So if you have something like this shape, it can automatically unwrap that into this uh, shape. So it's really good to have that. Then we have the sweep node as well. This also includes a UV feature. So if you have something to sweep along a curve, you can use the sweep node and enable a UV toggle here to calculate UVs in it. If you cap the shape, they're not unwrapped yet. Then we have the UV pelt node. So you, again, we need to fill in a certain seam area and then we can sort of like relax that shape in our UV space, as you can see over here. Then let's talk about editing our UVs. So if you just want to do a basic edit, edit and move our UV shells, we can use the UV edit. This is of course not procedurally. This is like a manual way of just moving things around by clicking it. Doing a bit more procedurally is the UV transform. So we can in general just move, rotate specific UV shells or everything. Then we can also fuse UV shells together if we feel like we need to fuse it. Also very useful and common note is UV layout note. If you want to pack your UV shells in a specific area, you can do that by the UV layout. There are many options here to set rotations, packing distances, uh, iterations, and so on. Next up is a smoothing note. So if you want to just smooth it and make it a bit more equal, you can do it here. Then we can have brush editing. So we can just take a brush and just relax or drag shapes around in the UV space. Then we have UV unitize. This is useful if you want to take your UV shells and just put them into zero to one ratio for procedural constructions. Then we have UV validation. So if you want to double check, for example, here our data to on distortion. So here we have some distorted UVs and we want to make sure that it's checked. Then we have a node to actually also remove the distortion. So if you have distortion and you want to remove it, here is a node for it. Then also there is a node for checking overlapping. So if you generate a UV and it's overlapping, you can solve this with this node. Then we have textile density. So if you want to double check textile density for your game or your project, so we're going to set our base textile density and then you will set your asset textile density. So here you can actually view what could be a good size of texture for a unique asset. For example, here, if I would enable or increase the texture size, I would see that I will be closer to matching my textile density that I have for the project. Then we also have previewing UVs. So quick sheet note is very useful if you just want to preview a texture, just drop this node down and it will work. Then we can also export our uh, UV space or UV wireframe. So this is useful if we want to go into Photoshop and start painting or hand paint something. This is very useful for that. Then we also have the visualizing tool of labs, which is uh, useful to see different UV chunks and UV seams. There are some options here to quickly double check that. That was it for this video going over most of the UV tools in Houdini quickly. So these are the basics that you need to know if you want to unwrap something in Houdini. Feel free to like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video. See you.